Good morning, Village Agents. Today is September 28th, 2020. Happy Mindset Monday. So today I wanted to talk about urgent versus important. One of the best pieces of wisdom that I've learned on how to be a good agent and a strong leader is really understanding the difference between urgent and important and doing so with extreme clarity. So this is something that I've struggled with for years. It doesn't come naturally to me. Like many of you, I want to be helpful. I want to react to other people's needs and wants, even if that means sacrificing some of my own. It feels good to be needed, right? We all can find some value in living that way, but that's not always the most effective way to serve our clients or even ourselves. So author Stephen Covey, uh, in several of his books, has described a very useful framework for how to prioritize long-term goals without get letting less important tasks get in the way, even when they seem urgent. So he has this quadrant. I'll show it on the screen here in a minute. But there's two columns at the top. Column one is urgent. Column two is uh, not urgent. The left side has row headings. Row one and row two are important and not important. So what this does is it gives you four quadrants inside a square. So quadrant one at the top left is uh, for tasks that are both urgent and important. So this is what you do, right? So examples of this would be a last minute change the day before closing that could throw things off. Uh, maybe there's a fire that has to be dealt with and it dealt with by you capably and immediately. Quadrant two uh, is at the top right is uh, for, for tasks that are not urgent, right? It's not a fire that has to be put out, but it is still important. If you don't do these, they then move to quadrant one and become uh, urgent priorities. Uh, so quadrant two, these are what uh, activities that you plan. An example of this would be activities that you just, you know, need to do after a listing appointment in order to secure the listing. You make some promises. Those are things that you have to do and plan and follow up and, and effectively. Maybe it's a marketing plan, right? Uh, quadrant three at the bottom left, are for tasks that are urgent, but not important, right? So these are things that must be done. They might have to be done soon, but they can be delegated. So examples of this might be contract to close paperwork, right? There's timelines that are important. You have to get the paperwork done, but it doesn't always require a real estate license to do some of those uh, items. And it may not be the highest and best use of your time. So especially if you could take that time and put it into quadrant two activities of planning and investing in, in future success. Quadrant four at the bottom right, are for things that are neither urgent or important, right? So this is what you eliminate. You gotta get rid of it, uh, or at least as much as possible, right? So an example of this could be excess time on social media, maybe TV watching, uh, pretty much anything that can suck you into this vortex of not being in control of your time while simultaneously not giving you much uh, value in return. Uh, Ninja talks about time management in a pretty similar way. They use some different terminology instead of like quadrant one, two, three, and four. They talk about PIE time, P-I-E. So P stands for profitability time. These are things, income producing activities. So if you're showing, if you're, if you're with a client and a contract, then you're basically in, in P time. That's profitability time. You can get paid for that. Uh, I stands for investment time. So time that you invest in getting more P time. And E is for everything else. Uh, so that's, you know, the quadrant four stuff. Uh, or maybe even some quadrant three stuff. So it's time wasters and things that you can delegate. So here's a challenge, all right? So grab a notebook today. So try this today if you can. Every 15 minutes, just stop. Maybe you put a timer on your phone. Just quickly jot down one or two words about what you did in the last 15 minutes. You might write down email, phone calls with clients, check Facebook, I uh, did laundry, whatever, right? Uh, just write that down. Don't judge yourself. Just in 15 minute increments, just jot down what you did. At the end of the day, go back through and put each task that you did into a category and then add up how much time you spent in each category. If you actually can do this, I think you're gonna find yourself filled with excitement and ideas about how you can become more productive and successful. Uh, this exercise, it, it's a little tedious. It's really not that hard though, so give it a try. We're all leaders in our own business, right? So John Maxwell is a big leadership guy. He talks about five habits uh, that differentiate leaders from followers. So listen to these. So leaders initiate, followers react. Leaders lead by picking up the phone to make contact. Followers listen and wait for the phone to ring. Leaders spend time planning and try to anticipate problems before they arise. Followers spend time living day to day, reacting to problems when they arise. Leaders invest time with people. Followers spend time with people. Leaders fill their calendars with priorities, whereas followers fill their calendars with requests. Which category resonates with you?
which side of the spectrum did you resonate with more? Did that sound more like you? So if you identify more with the follower's role, then definitely do the exercise I mentioned above. And I think if you do, you're going to see some big openings and opportunities to be able to capture more quadrant two time and invest in yourself and invest in your business and not get distracted by the quadrant four stuff and take control of your business a little bit more to take yourself to wherever you want to go, whatever your definition of success is, because that is our goal for you is to achieve whatever your definition of success. We want to help you get there. So hope this was helpful. Let me know how it goes and I hope you have a wonderful week.